Oh, wow. Let's move on to some more trending stories. The acting president, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, has ordered the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, to quote-unquote, overhaul the management and activities of the police units of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad. This development follows numerous complaints from Nigerians on social media, accusing SARS officers of several misconducts, ranging from harassment to extortion, to assault, to extrajudicial killings. In a statement issued by his media aide, Laolua Conde, the acting president ordered the IGP to shut down the units with immediate effect. The statement reads as follows, quote-unquote, Following persistent complaints and reports on the activities of the special anti-robbery squad that border on allegations of human rights violations, His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbajo SAN, Acting President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has directed the Inspector General of Police to, with immediate effect, overhaul the management and activities of SARS. Furthermore, Chukudi, he's asked that he ensures that um, any unit that emerges is going to be intelligence-driven, etc. We saw our acting president quoting human rights law, everything, and people were saying, wow. Now, I would want to say congratulations to Nigerians on the part that we have been dogged, we have been resolute, and we have been focused on the point. And the point is a special unit that is supposed to serve our interests protect us and ensure that we are safe, should not abuse the powers that have been entrusted in their hands and take advantage of us. Absolutely. Now, for over one year, even though it's coming late, for over one year, Nigerians have been consistently crying out. Yeah. We have seen videos, we have heard stories, hashtag we have seen NSAS pictures, everywhere. hashtag NSAS campaign. It has been trending. And thankfully, I am not one to come out to congratulate you for doing your job. Yeah. But we all know that in Nigeria, if you do not act mm. responsibly, knowing the powers that you possess, mm. if you get into a particular position and you have the opportunity to effect that mm. change, you can do it. I'm going to be blunt here. It would have been impossible for Professor Yami Oshibajo as vice president of Nigeria. I know that he could have given an advice to his principal to say, sir, our young people have been crying for several months. In fact, for over a year that this special unit have been treating people this way, don't you think we should review or should we review? Because two heads are better than one. But in all honesty, for over one year, we did not see anything. Now that our father, President Mamadou Buhari, is in the United Kingdom on leave, the acting president, and this is not separating their powers, has acted and he has acted promptly. Yeah. So kudos to President Mamadou Buhari and acting president Yemi Oshibajo. Now, yeah. let me say this, please. We do not need Queen Elizabeth to come to Nigeria or Prince Charles or Prince Harrison to explain what overhaul means. Overhaul is overhaul. And the reason I'm saying this is because we have an inspector general of police who gave a different interpretation to the meaning of relocate to Benue. He went there, didn't spend up to 24 hours, went to Nasarawa and came back to Abuja. So please, we would want you to follow this instruction to the latter. Now, number three. Yesterday evening, I read that, you know, the Nigeria police force had immediately acted because I was advocating that, please, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, acting president, give the Inspector General of Police 48 hours to come up with a concrete plan that would ensure that all that you have itemized we are going to achieve it. If we cannot come up with a concrete plan that will show the process through which we are going to achieve an intelligence-driven force that will be restricted to their job description, he should be fired. Yeah. But I'm happy that they came up with something. But I'm sorry, I have critically looked at what they came up with. It is very vague, it is too long, and it doesn't go straight to the point. Tell us a bit say, about oh, it. Thank you very much. Now, Jibo Moshud, you know, the first PRO, that is the spokesperson of the Nigeria Police Force, who is always speaking for the Nigeria Police Force, yeah. who we know has a history of speaking for the Nigeria Police Force, yeah. even though sometimes when he speaks, it's not what we see. Mm. I'm going to be very blunt here. Mobile police officers who had been complaining that they were transferred to Meiduguri and they had not been paid the allowances took to the streets. We saw videos, we saw pictures. They were firing or they were shooting sporadically into the air. But in the evening, they said that they were not protesting, that they came for inquiry visit. Inquiry visit, shooting sporadically into the air by broad daylight, I don't have any problem with that. My problem now is if acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, itemized very important factors. For example, we spoke about the gross violation of human rights. 
He also spoke about intelligence driven. That is the people that should be there. Indeed, if we say it is a special unit, it should really be very, very special. Not to give people special slap or beat people specially or check people with their special iPhones or harass people with carrying dreadlocks or check people with tattoo wearing shredded jeans or carrying laptop, please. Intelligence driven is intelligence driven. And he also emphasized that they should be restricted to their job description. Special anti robbery squad. I have friends who are in SARS. I never even knew that they were in SARS until it got to the point where we were discussing this and some of them joined me to say, ah, let's look at it this way. That was when I realized. <laughs> you know, the reason why it is special anti robbery squad. Yeah. If you see some of them, they wear, they dress like B.I.G. and Tupac. Mm -hmm. They wear gold chains. They wear earrings. They drew dreads. Some even have tattoos. It is allowed within their job description so that they can infiltrate into bad guys and get information that will help them. That's why if you see a SARS official, you can argue, ah, is this guy really SARS? Aside from maybe the jacket that they wear and the way they go about it, you'll be wondering. That's why it is special and robbery squad. But the reason why it is special is because it is supposed to be an elite unit mm. and they're supposed to discharge their responsibility. So all of this, you know, that a new commissioner has been appointed, it is no longer SARS, it is now F, this, it is now this, this is what we are going to do, this is what we are going to do, no. We should see a concrete plan of action mm. that would specifically, you know, state that by December of 2018, this is where we would have got into in our quest to attain an intelligence-driven force. Mm. By December of 2019, this is the people we hope to be in, uh, in, in this uh, special unit. By 2022, these are the sets of people that we know will constitute this special force. Mm. So it shouldn't be because acting president Yemi Oshibadu has given the order, we now have to just respond and we go that way. No, Let's we need to see a concrete plan. Yeah. I was going to say, let's actually take a look at exactly what that statement in particular says. Because the statement reads that the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, previously under the Force Criminal Intelligence and Investigations Department, is henceforth to operate under the Department of Operations Force Headquarters, Abuja. The Commissioner of Police is answerable to the Inspector General of Police through the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Department of Operations. Quote, unquote, in the observance of full compliance with the presidential directives, the federal anti-robbery squad will be intelligence-driven and will be restricted to the prevention and detection of armed robbery, kidnapping, and the apprehension of offenders linked to the stated offenses only. New FSARS commanders are appointed for the federal anti-robbery squad across the country that will now exist and operate in the state and zonal commands under the commissioner of police at the force headquarters Abuja. A federal SARS commander of a rank of chief superintendent of police, but not below superintendent not below superintendents of police will be in charge of FSARs in states and zonal commands in the countries. All commissioners of police have been directed by the Inspector General of Police to comply with this directive with immediate effect and warn their personnel not to expose as SARS operatives. The IGP X squad and monitoring units have been mandated to go around the commands of police formations nationwide to ensure strict compliance with the presidential directives and apprehend any erring police officer. Now, this report goes on and on, but wow. But it is not time-bound. Thank That you. is my problem. If you go down, they, was, they, they also yeah. said that they were going to do a medical and psychological evaluation yeah. of the personnel Human of Human rights FSA. desks officers, medical psychological evaluation of all FSARS personnel, redesigning of the uniform with identity name for all SARS, FSARS personnel. What we want is a date. Yeah. Tell us that, okay... By August 31st, mm. all of these would have been achieved. And we're going to come out and tell Nigerians that this is the new uniform mm. of the special people operating based on intelligence. So if I ask you what the difference is between SARS and FSARS? It's us SARS and FSARS now. <sighs> when we say overhaul, that's why I stated clearly that we yeah. don't need Queen Elizabeth to explain what overhaul means. And it shouldn't be complex. See, as Nigerians, eh, we do not need all of this information. It's okay, you know, to put it out there. But this information is not for us. When you call for an overhaul, you're basically saying that our citizens are not going to see these ones again. Simple. Now, what we want you to do is be clear that, okay, we are going to comply with the presidential directive. Mm. We have immediately initiated an action to see that we comply with this directive. And fellow Nigerians, by the 31st of August, you are going to see 
a new set of intelligence-driven personnel with their new uniform. This is the color of the uniform. These are, the, these are what you should identify. This is, you know, whether they will be wearing their name tags on the right part of their chest or on the left part of their chest. That is what we are concerned about. And we want to see efficient service delivery. But I would want to commend Nigerians for their doggedness and their determination to see that we are going to, you know, get the government to act in our interest. And this is also an advice to the Nigerian people. No matter how long it takes, if we speak out collectively with one voice, those that are unscrupulous elements of the political class that want to take advantage of us are going to fail because united we stand, divided we fall. If we keep crying out and demanding, not just sitting behind our keypads, not just talking about the issue, but we also take an action. And one way of taking an action is for the political class to know that you have it in your interest to keep them out of government if they fail in their responsibility. Yeah. A lot of people are not, and this is no joke, mm -hmm. a lot of people are not saying, uh -uh, are we not just going to tell our father who is on leave <laughs> to just say, uh, you know, because the, the air you breathe in the United Kingdom, London to be precise, is different from this one here. This one, too much generator, you know, black smoke, to just tell our daddy to just, because, I mean, you need to rest. Daddy, just stay there. Your acting is really doing, uh, just, uh, I'm just saying, that was, some people are saying, but the truth is, it should not get to the level where people are saying, eh, if Mr. A is not around, we tend to see a flurry of activities when Mr. B is in charge. No, the responsibility of government is 24, what's 24 hours? 24 plus one. Because government keeps working. Government is in continuum. Exactly. From this government to that government, government is operational. It, there's, no, there's no leave. There's exactly. no holiday for government. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.